Welcome to The Listening Place. I'm Nancy Rosanoff, the host. And this show is where we listen to life from the inside out. Today my guest is a very dear friend of mine named Carol Adrian. And she's the author of many, many books. The most recent one is called The Purpose of Your Life. So we're going to start off talking about that. Welcome to the show, Carol. Thank you, Nancy. Now tell us, why is it important for people to even think about uh, having a purpose to their life? Well, it, I teach a lot of classes with people, and they always come with questions about the purpose of their life. Where is it? And what I sense in people is that there's a big void in our lives if we don't know what it is or if we don't feel like we're on track. We feel restless. We feel like, what? Isn't there something more? I hear that all the time. Isn't there something more? Mm. For people who have great jobs, and they're very successful, but they need to feel that they're doing something that really is who they are and it's meaningful to you know, the rest of us, that there's some point to what they're doing. So is purpose having to do with a career? Is it having the right, finding the right career, the right job for you? That's a good question. See, that's exactly what we need to look at because I think it really hangs us up if we think that life purpose can be defined as a job title. It's much bigger than that. In fact, I believe that we're born with our life purpose. We well, already have it when we come into this body. Well, tell us more of what does that mean. So is life purpose something that I can say, oh, you know what I want? I want the purpose of my life to be a chef because I love to cook. Can I go out and make that happen? Well, you can if you're really motivated. Absolutely. What you, what's really helps here is a strong intention. Now, we know people who are like, they're born to be a brain surgeon, let's say. They know coming in they want to be a doctor. There's people who love teaching. There's people who love to sing, and they're talented, and they pursue it they can't do anything else so a lot of us do have that passion but a lot of us don't either hmm so if we don't have a passion for anything do we still have a purpose to yes, our life we do we do and we may not really know what it is in in terms of defining it for a long time it may i don't know if we ever know but sometimes what i've come to look at is that it seems to be something that is we're born with it and it may be even the development of a characteristic like patience Hmm. And you find yourself in you know, a family where there's a lot of you know, conflict going on. Maybe you're the conflict resol resolver there. It may show up early in something that you naturally do. I do think, you know, I, used to, I have a friend in California who is a talk show host. And uh, one time we got to laughing about what were you criticized for as a child. Hmm. And when you think about it, when, as soon as I said this to Bonnie, she says, oh, I know exactly. She says, I was criticized for talking too much and asking too many questions. Hmm. Well, what do you need to do? If you're going to be a talk show host, you need to talk and ask a lot of questions. So it's not necessarily the thing that we get reinforced not with in our childhood, although it could be. It could be. It could, it's the thing that we do most naturally. Is that what yes. you're saying? It's what we do most naturally. We hardly think that it's anything sometimes. It's where we lose track of time. Mm. And I think also there's something I've been noticing about. It's, it's an evolution. It's an unfolding through the decades of your life. I say decades because it's sort of a handy 10-year cycle. Mm -hmm. But I know for myself when I was in my 20s, I didn't know what the purpose of my life was. Were you even thinking about it then? No, I wasn't. I didn't even have an identity mm. to myself. Right. So my, the purpose of that period was for me to find an identity. So I got married. You know, <laughs> when in doubt, get married. Yeah, so there you have it. <laughs> and in my 30s, it was much more about exploring my creativity. And I, I was an artist then. I was a painter. So I didn't, I didn't think about what my life purpose was, but I felt very artistic. So mm -hmm. I would have said that I was an artist. Right. You know, and then I had children, so then I was a mother. And that kind of gives you a purpose for a certain amount of years. And it wasn't until, really, I got into my 50s where I really decided or knew that, you know, I'm driven to be a teacher. Right. And I, I, if you had told me that when I, in fact, people said, you know, uh, at that stage, you only had two choices, really, to be like a nurse or a teacher or a mother. Right. You know, and if somebody had told me then that I would be teaching, I would have said, what are you, crazy? I, what would I teach? But now I'm teaching something that I can't help but do. Mm. I can't help but, you know, read information and then want to share it with somebody. And so, thank God, I'm a workshop leader and you know I can write books because now I have a place to put that energy but I do it without thinking I, I do it without even if I didn't get paid for it I would be doing it right I love to share what I know with people well isn't that true actually through all the things you talked about in your life getting married mm -hmm. raising children being an artist at each of those stages you would have done those things that's what you did right that was the purpose for that time for that time period right and the other thing about life purpose is you know if you're always doing something that's interesting to you, if you're always learning something new, you're on purpose. 
Because I remember I used to choose, I had a million day jobs before I got into writing. Yes. And I'm a big fan of day jobs, actually. Um, and I, I realized that each time I picked a, a place to work, I worked in a variety of places, always in, as an office administrator, some type of administrative thing. And, um, you know, I learned about recovery issues. I learned in a re rehabilitation program. Hmm. I worked in that. And I worked in financial matters. I learned a little bit about a lot of fields. And today, all those pieces fit perfectly in what I do when I'm counseling with people. Hmm. So I had to learn all of those. So I think that we have to remember that nothing we learn is ever wasted. It's going to show up somewhere down the line. So it sounds like what you're saying is that there's two different things. We can be on purpose mm -hmm. and we can have a purpose. Talk a little bit about the difference of those two ways of uh, phrasing right. it. Right. Being on purpose where, is where you feel really plugged in. You feel like you're getting information probably from your intuition. You're making choices that are meaningful to you. You, 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 know, you meet people that you, know, you feel like you're really uh, connecting with them. And being on purpose is feeling like you're not wasting time. Now, you may be stalled during the day. This mm -hmm. isn't like every minute that you're feeling this way. And it's not like you don't have problems. In fact, when you are on purpose, you're really moving into new territory all the time. Hmm. So you're always at that edge. That makes you feel like you're on purpose. That sort of creative edge of filled with conflict sometimes. And, and sometimes it is. And sometimes you have to sort out what is really important to me, what is really meaningful to me, where, is, where do I have the most positive energy. And it, sometimes it's hard to tell. It's not always easy. And sometimes you'll run into conflict. Uh, with other people or other people's agendas so you don't know what you're doing. But if you keep following the positive energy, and we've talked about this a lot. I yes. know you feel this way too. Yeah. In fact, you may have been the one who told me that. <laughs> but going towards what feels positive is much better than getting mired down in a lot of regrets and blame. What, what takes us off purpose is when we're in that place where we're blaming circumstances. Oh, I didn't get enough education early mm -hmm. on so I can never be a success. Or, you know, something where we've, we're blaming others or circumstances and we regret things. Right. That or, makes us lose power. And when we're losing power, we don't have a lot of creative energy then to put out something which will in turn bring us back opportunities. Huh, how interesting. So we can, that's like, we know we're on purpose mm -hmm. when we feel plugged in, when we have that sense of flow right. and energy and positivity. Right. And then how is that different from having a purpose in life? Well, that purpose in life is something that's inside of you. And it's what it, it will surface in where you pay attention to things. Hmm. Some of us, you know, if you go into a bookstore, what aisle do you walk down? I always go to the metaphysical part. Right. You know, I never walk down the calculus aisle, <laughs> the mathematic <laughs> aisle. That is not That tells you something, right? Even though I'm a numerologist, yeah. I don't go to traditional mathematicians yeah. and read books on that. So if a person can go into a bookstore and just say, well, where do I normally, what am I drawn to? Right. Begin to notice that. You know, the, another way of looking at your purpose might be to look back at, like, say, take three times in your life when you were really, really excited and you felt great. Is there a pattern to what you were doing or who you were being at that time? Because I think we can sort of think of purpose in terms of what we're doing is sort of who are we being. Mm -hmm. You know, are we mainly a teacher? you know, or somebody who's very creative and always expressing ideas. And that could be done through sales or acting or singing or other, you know, ways of expressing. But you're always expressing. You're always mm -hmm. talking. You're always creating, communicating. So a purpose could be I'm here to express myself or I'm here to sing. Right. And that could take many different forms. And that could be a purpose. Right. It's kind of the, it's the main focus of our lives. The main expression of who we are, right. is that who, who we say? are? It's who we are and where we find meaning and what really turns us on. You can trust those because they're there for a purpose. If you have a desire to do something, follow it. It's there mm. for a reason. So the purpose is you can find purpose every single day. And that's what I really talk about in, with people in classes is that I don't feel you have to wait. See, the myth is here, I'll find my purpose, I'll know what it is, then I will go do it, and then I'll be happy. Right. Well, that's a very linear approach, and it's not going to happen that way. So how can you be happy today? What is your purpose? We, you and I are talking right now. Our purpose is to communicate and have right. a good time. That's all we have to know about right now. Hmm. Then the next part of the day, we'll have a different purpose. Right. To rest or to recuperate or to rejuvenate, and then so forth and so on. So each day, whoever you're talking to, that is the most important person in your life. How are you going to be with that person? Hmm. And then you begin to get your sense of your purpose 
how it flows through you and how you're being with yourself and with other people. Now, you mentioned earlier that you feel that everyone is born with a purpose in life. Mm -hmm. Say more about what you mean by that. Well, I've done a lot of research in the last uh, few years on the different books that I've been writing, and I really have come to believe that we do live many lifetimes, and each one is taken for a purpose, or mm. we would not take it. We wouldn't be born. So we may so your be... Your ultimate purpose being what of all these different lives? What's the well, ultimate purpose? Well, I think the, that's a good question. You know, I, I still wrestle with that. I haven't got a good, clear answer for that. But my idea of it is, from this point of view of my understanding, is that we are a soul. So that this soul is bigger than we are. It's bigger than any one part of our li one lifetime. And that that soul has its own agenda. And if I knew that, I'd be... <laughs> You'd be enlightened. I'd enlightened. Yeah. So I'm assuming that this may be a very linear model in my own mind, mm -hmm. that, that the soul has some agenda and that each lifetime polishes a facet of that bigger whole. You know, I look at it as we're here to get better at being who we are. Mm -hmm. We're here to get better at, right. at manifesting or at living the essence of who we are. Right. And each one of us has an essence, and mm -hmm. that essence does travel through different time periods, That's through different lifetimes. That's a good times. way to put it. Mm -hmm. And we keep getting better mm -hmm. at being who we are. Right. And so in one lifetime, we may get better at being the shoemaker part of ourselves. Yes. The craftsperson, right? Right. And then at another lifetime, we may get better at being the extrovert, the speaker, right. the teacher right. part mm -hmm. of ourselves. I definitely see it like that. Sort of these roles that we take and work through them, you know. And what I love to do is help people see who, what their roles are or what their, not roles in a, in a fake way, mm -hmm. but who are you, what is the essence of you, and let that shine out. You know, let let that part come out more quickly or more beautifully. Because a lot of times we hold ourselves back. Right. We're told early on that we shouldn't be able to do things or it's not the right time or we have to hold back. We're too big. A lot of people are told, you're too big, you're too powerful, you know, mm -hmm. you need to simmer down. You have too much energy. You have too much energy. I hear that a lot from people. And so just accepting who you are and letting it be okay, not so that you're going to bowl people over, but that you're going to be present with yourself. You're going to show up in life and be present. And that's really what your purpose is every day, is to be there as fully as you can be and to not fall into these patterns of a lot of blame or regret or self-deprecation mm -hmm. and, you know, just getting in your own way. A lot of it sounds like you're saying it's important to be comfortable with who we are. Right. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. And that when we can be comfortable with who we are, our life unfolds. It does. In a, in a magical way. And that's the second part of this whole thing. It's like really being present and out of that what happens. Well, then that's when these magical synchronicities happen. Synchronicity being this time when things come into your life when you have no way of predicting that and no understanding of how it got there, but it seems to answer a question that you've had or it, it's, you know, it's advancing you further on. Mm -hmm. So that really listening to the intuition, which I know you, know you and I talk about that all the time, Listening to the inner voice is where we first get a sense of what the purpose is. And I, something else that I've n noticed lately, uh, I just taught a class, and the subject of internal and external authority came up mm. a lot. And I think this is really important. Internal authority is when you know that you're, you need to do something. You know you feel responsible. You want to do it. You're going to do it. And you're really listening to that inner guidance. It has an internal power. That right. It has it. a power. The external authority is when you think, well, I should do this mm. because of some reason. Right. You know, please somebody. It'll be good for my resume. It'll be I good for my resume. That. <laughs> yes. So that's really looking at the external authority. And I find that when people are on purpose, they get much more in touch with the choices. Here's a choice. Each day, almost, we have a choice. Are you going to listen to the internal authority or the mm. external authority? Mm. And I'm not saying external is always bad. It's just that when you're coming from an internal authority, there may be a higher order being established than hmm. you're aware of. And so you need to do some things that may take you out of your comfort zone. Or you may not, you know, you have to be willing to sometimes look like a fool when you're starting a new venture. No one's ever done it before. Right. You know, you may just have to say, well, I'm going to try this. So what you know? would you say to someone who, um, who is wondering, what, what should I do now? I'm at it lost. I'm at loose ends. I don't know who I am. I don't have a sense of a purpose in life. What should I do first? Right. Well, I think it's really important to spend some time each day just being quiet. A lot mm -hmm. of us don't do that because if you fill up your time with meaningful things, you're never going to get in touch with what's more important than maybe some of these things you're doing just because you've always done them. Mm -hmm. Or somebody saying, oh, you know, it's very easy that people call you up on the phone. They want you to spend 10 minutes doing this or organizing that. You know, you really need to say... I think one of the best things you can say is 
I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. Let me think about it. Mm -hmm. Let me look at my calendar and really take some time to prioritize. How much, you know, where do you want to spend your time? Where do you want to spend your spirit? Yeah. Some of these things we do just aren't that useful to us. So take time to do that. Notice, you know, keep even a journal of what do you like to do? One of my best stories is a woman who came over to my house one time for me to sign a book. And I was thinking, oh, well, you know, I was kind of busy, but I thought, well, I'll, I'll see her. Something in me said, I'll just talk with her. And it was really a great interchange for me as, as well as her, as, you know, she came over and I learned a lot from it. It was such mm. a perfect example because she was a woman who'd been working in a lot of office jobs and she kept getting laid off. So here, you know, life was trying to tell her, you know, this isn't happening. There's a purpose for these layoffs. So instead of jumping back in again and just getting the next job that she could have done, she said, I'm going to take some time off and really think about who I am. She happened to get my book, The Purpose of Your Life, and she just did that one simple exercise in there, like, what do you love to do? I mean, mm. it's such a simple thing. Yes. And she, the only thing she could think of was, I love to play the piano. Hmm. So, you know, how do you make money at that? You know, you think, well, is she going to go back to Juilliard and mm -hmm. get a degree or what? So anyways, it, she took some time off, and she was sort of following her intuition to go up to the local mall, and she went up there, and as she, she hadn't been up there for a while because she was saving money, not working. She saw a store that was new, so she said, oh, I'm going to go check it out. Went in there, and it was a music store. So she started asking questions about the keyboards and so forth. Well, long story short, the manager finally came home and said, Gosh, you're really knowledgeable. You're just the kind of person we love to have working in this store. Now, see, here she said to herself, she said this one, Well, oh, I don't think I can do that because I've always, you know, I've, I haven't ever done sales. Right. She's always been in office jobs. The woman said to her, Oh, we're happy that you haven't done sales. Because our customers don't like to be sold. They just want somebody who's really they can talk to. Right, someone so who's knowledgeable. She got a job there, and she, as far as I know, she's still very happily employed there in this music store. Isn't that fantastic? Because she likes to, she loves music. She's, she's doing what she loves. She's closer to music. Now, no, that's, I wanna, a, that's I wanna, a small story about it. It doesn't have to be some gigantic thing. It can be very small like it's, that. Well, that's what life is, is a series of very simple, small right. steps. Right. And I want to make sure before we go any further that everyone knows that you are the author of a great book called The Purpose of Your Life. Mm -hmm. And that that's been out for a couple of years now and it's done very well. And you have a workbook that goes with that too, right. right? Which is in a separate cover. Right. That's called Find Your Purpose, Change Your Life. Find Your Purpose, Change Your Life. So you can do all the exercises to, to, to you really define who you are. You okay, know, good. Oh, that it's leads all us in. Book. <laughs> Hold on the book. Right. And that leads us then into then your recent no your most recent book which is coming out in a couple of months right, right in June. which is about changing right it's called when life changes or you wish it would right so we have purpose and purpose and change finding your purpose change your life right. now we go into right. change right and so tell us what's new for you there what's what are you talking about in terms of this right well this book? was very interesting because um, I, I sort of organized a way of looking at change I think we move through changes sometimes we feel like we're in the void and nothing is happening. And so that's a time when we want to make a change, but how do we do that? And there are other times when we get a change, like somebody, you know, we get laid off, or mm -hmm. somebody, we lose somebody important in our life, we go some, some major changes that come to us. Mm -hmm. So how do we deal with those? And I got really fascinated by that, so I started researching it a lot. I wanted to know what a lot of the traditions have said, you know, Buddhism, Christianity, um, different ways of looking at, throughout the ages, what really works. And... Um, you know, it gets back a lot to listening to your inner voice, you know, even when you're in the void, mm -hmm. being willing to wait it out sometimes. Mm -hmm. Eventually there will be a spark that comes in where you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Then you move forward and you start to get insights. And that's really tracing kind of a mythic pattern. It's really the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Because the hero in us sets out. We want to experience something new when we want to make changes, when we want to grow, we want to find our life purpose. So we set out and things happen. Those are these breaks mm -hmm. to our lives. Things happen. And we're forced each day almost to make a choice. Are you going to go back the same old route and do the same old thing? Or are you going to investigate something that's been kind of at the back of your mind? Mm. And as you start to choose that left-hand path, that's what Joseph Campbell calls it, you begin to be forced to make new choices and to grow. And as you grow, you, it, the world opens up. And that's how I see life purpose and life changes. The life changes are there. If you haven't been willing to move ahead, life will move it for you. Right. This has happened to me several times. Oh, uh, all of us, I think. Yeah. And the idea is, I, I think also we can set, I want this to happen in my life, or I want to go in this direction. Right. And what we need to be willing to do is to let go, because we, we head in that direction, but it's going to be completely different by the time we get there. That's right. 
But that, you bring up a really good point. So what we can do to make changes happen is to set an intention. Now, what does that mean? It's like an affirmation. And an intention is the driving energy that says, you know, I want to go down this path. And I think sometimes we think we have like 10,000 things to do. I hear this all the time. Oh, I Mm -hmm. have so many things, I don't know what to choose. Well, you probably don't have 10,000 options. You probably have two or three. And you want to start to explore one of them. Make it a project to start going down that road. Ask people about it. Start investigating. Usually it means you have to make a few phone calls. Like if you want to go back to college or you want to try something out, start moving in that direction. Start intending that you want to have information come to you Mm -hmm. about this choice or this this area and you'll be amazed once you put yourself on assignment so to speak yes by saying to the universe i want to know more about porcupines you'll meet 10 people who know about porcupines and have just mentioned it in conversation it's kind of fun to do it it is actually yeah and um i have a friend who started she is my primo example of somebody who changed directions made life changes herself and yet the synchronicities helped her continued on a path that she never knew how to begin at the first. She was a real estate agent, very successful, wanted to be a travel writer. How do you make that bridge? Right. Well, one thing led to another. She didn't do it in a linear manner, but she weighed it. She was intending it very strongly, and then one thing, she got one little assignment. She just kind of like a novice sent it in to an editor. He accepted it. She moved forward, and since then she's developed this whole new career. She's traveled around the world. To, she's found her niche in golf, golf travel writing. And she's traveled all over the world. And she's now developing into public speaking. And she's doing it one step at a time. Right. But and she the, didn't think about that when she first started. No, no. She just took that first step. She just had the first step. And I now call it putting yourself on assignment. Yes. She said whenever she has an assignment for an article, literally, it, pieces come into play. I mean, she'll meet just the right person who owns a golf course in some obscure place. And it helps her. And I believe that uh, putting yourself on assignment, I'm going to do this, I intend to do this, sets something in motion that you can never predict where it's going to take you. But it's your choice to set it in motion. Yes, and it's important, I think, to also, and I want to hear what you think about this, Mm -hmm. to be open to see where it takes you. Because I've worked with people who who think of intention as, oh, I want to visualize exactly what I want, when I want it, how it's going to happen. And I find that that's way too limiting of it a is. way to go. It is, absolutely. One thing you can say is, I want to feel good when I wake up in the morning. I want to meet great people to work with. I want right. to feel excited about life. Those are feelings that are strong. That helps to energize your intention. You, you can have a mental intention. And we most of us start out with that. We mm-hmm. might want to get a new job or mm-hmm. something. But we forget to ask for what about what what is it that we want in this new job? Right. What do we really want to feel when we go to work? Well, in the how morning? do you want to feel? What do we want to feel when we leave that job in the afternoon? Yes. And you want to feel like you're being used to your fullest extent, and you're yes. having a good time. You right. Want to really put that in there because I think fun is a big part of fat, pa- passion. Yes. And uh, so anyway, I think I, I sometimes have people say to themselves like to kind of get your juices flowing. I intend to, you could say, I want Mm -hmm. something. Right. I intend to, like, what are you going to do to get there? Right. Or start looking for some, what what are some first steps that you could think of doing? And uh, really keep your focus on that. And another good question to ask yourself or a statement to to finish is, I am going to eliminate. Because a lot of times Mm. you need to clear the decks before you get rolling. Oh, very good. Yeah, even if it means cleaning out your garage. Right. You need, if there is anything in your life that is sort of nagging you in the back, like any conflict that you have, like with your aunt or your ex-husband or anyone that's dragging you down even a little bit, I would suggest resolving that in your mind, however you need to do it. Mm. Sometimes you don't have to talk to the person directly, but you and your mind are able to say, you know, at that time that was the best we could do and I'm, I'm going to let this go now. Right. It's not worth it to drag this stuff around. And it actually interferes with the outpouring of your life purpose, which is a magnetic force field, which is always attracting things into your life if you're not holding it back. Hmm. So that's how I sort of see it energetically. Right. It's this constant interaction. It's not just, I'm going to make my life happen, and it's all up to me to do the steps and put everything in place. Right. It sounds like you're talking about this creative interaction right. with a force that's larger than who we are. Exactly. 
that make sense to it you? It is, and I think sometimes necessity is a, comes into play here. Because bef when I started writing, I never set out to start writing books. Mm -hmm. it, it, never, it wasn't something that was on my agenda. Right. But there came a point in my life when I'd gone through a lot of upheavals. I had had a, that, a very serious illness, and I got divorced, and my finances were in ruin. And I was actually living with a friend of mine in a little room that was 8 by 10. And it was so funny. I mean, if it hadn't been for her, I don't know what I would have done. But it was around that time that I was, I was building my practice, which I had done counseling, and I was building my practice, but I still needed more money in order to get my, a place of my own. So I, I was sort of meditating and thinking about this, and it came to me that maybe I could help somebody with their writing. Hmm. And I'd never thought of this before. I'm like, where did that come from? But I thought, well, I, you know, I do like to write. It's something I do well. And I, what am I willing to do for money? Well, I wouldn't mind writing. So I called a friend of mine. I took the next step. And I called a friend of mine who was an agent in the writing field. She was the only one I knew who knew writers. So I, I said, if you know of anybody, if you hear of anyone who needs a writer, let me know. Well, I didn't know what this would bring in. But by the end of that day, she, had, she called me back and she, she said she had heard of a doctor that wasn't too far from where I lived. He wanted to help writing a book on homeopathy and sports medicine. Well, we have to end it there because we're just about the end of our time. But I just want to let people know that the rest is history in a way that Carol, you wrote, you ended up writing the companion book to the Celestine Prophecy, which is a huge bestseller. And that started you on your writing career right. and, your, and a much larger teaching right. career around the world. And I want to thank you for your thoughts today. It's been so great. It's been Our time has been gone so fast. Very fast. And it was great to have you here. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. And thank you. This is Nancy Rosanoff with The Listening Place. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.